Hi guys and welcome to this video on practical applications for simultaneous equations. Now we have looked in previous videos at solving simultaneous equations, yes, and we've looked at it graphically and using by hand and by using a calculator in lots and lots of different ways. And if you haven't already watched those videos, why not head over and have a look? Where are they? On YouTube. And talking of YouTube, if you can do me the honor of clicking on subscribe, that would be greatly, greatly appreciative. Why? Well, no one watches mass videos and sitting here talking to myself seems a bit weird. So if you can click on that button, it just lets me know that people are actually watching. And there's massguru.com out there for you as well to be able to sign up. Oh, Totally free to sign up with all the videos organized by textbook and by chapter and with downloadable notes and oh, so, so, so much more. So head over there if you could. Now, what are we going to do today? Looking at simultaneous equations to solve problems of a practical nature. Yes, now again, the whole point of doing maths is that we apply it in real world situations. I know, I know, I know. There is a joke coming. Just bear with me. Yes, but we're going to recap. What is simultaneous equations? They are two equations that can be solved simultaneously to find a point of intersection, i.e. where these graphs meet. Now, I've basically told you that. Basically, it's where one point has um, the same x and the same y value. Yes, but what does that actually mean in a real world situation? Well, like you, there are days where I sit and go, where am I ever going to use this? If you are stuck on a mountain with bear grills, yes, I know there is apparently bear grills. I have no idea who that is. Um, are you suddenly going to whip out your mask and go, do you know what, I think we'll solve this simultaneously? Probably not. You'll fight for your life and probably decide who's going to eat each other. Um, yeah, I don't know that I could eat um, someone else's human bits, but anyway, that's just gross and we'll move right on. Yeah, but the point of it is, you're actually going to do this for an exam because your maths teacher or whoever's teaching you this stuff is going to be evil enough to put this stuff on an exam because it's all well and good you solving it using a calculator and we know this is a cow's course but you've got to be able to extract information from a question. I've got three examples. We're going to do them by hand, and then we're going to do them on the CAS to check. So, tickets for a movie cost $19.50 for adults and $14.50 for children. 200 tickets were sold, giving a total of 3,265. How many children's tickets were sold? Whoa, where are the equations? Well, in this situation, you've got to make them. Now, there's no X's and Y's here. You've got to choose your letters that you're going to need to use. And you're going to say, oh, yeah, it's all right. You've got adults and children. So let's use A to stand for adults and C to stand for children. Okay, so now bearing in mind there were 200 tickets sold, we know that the number of adult tickets and the number of children tickets must total 200. So the number of adult tickets and the number of children tickets is equal to 200. So we're going to let A stand for the number of adults and C stand for the number of children. That's one equation. But to have simultaneous equations, we need two. We need another one. So they've also told us how much money was raised. So they told us that $3,265 was raised. But how? Well, the adults each paid $19.50. So that became $19.50 times by A, because that's how many adult tickets were sold, or how much we got, plus what was the children's? $14.50 times C. Now again, with practice, ladies and gentlemen, you will get this, right? Because there's only so many questions we can probably give you. So writing those out slightly nicer, we got A plus C is equal to 200, and then we got 19.5 A plus 14.5 C is 3 two, six, five. What are we going to do now? Well, are my A's and C's the same? Nope. So I'm going to make them the same. So I'm going to multiply the top by 19.5. You go, Yeesh. yes, we are now. Although I say we're not going to use a calculator, we're going to use a calculator. So we know that's going to be 19.5A plus 19.5C is equal to, all right, firing that up. Come on, calculator, stop going to sleep. 200 times 19.5 gives me 3900. Zero, zero. Now you're going to turn around and say, well, hold on a moment. If you're using a calculator, can't we just use the system of equations? <laughs> Please don't make my life any more complicated than it needs to be. All right, this one, we just write down the second equation. 19.5 plus 14.5c is equal to 3265. What are we going to do now? We're going to eliminate because they are both positive. Plus and plus, make a minus. So we're going to take them away. They go. Bye bye. 19.5 minus 14.5 gives me 5c. 
and 3900 minus 3265 gives me 635. Divide both sides by 5 gives me 127 children tickets. Drop the mic. What did we do? Are we finished? Well, pretty much because it just said how many children's tickets were sold. We don't need to finish the rest of the question and find out how many adults' tickets were sold because it was done. Now, obviously, we can now check this on a CAS. Creating the equations, the CAS isn't going to do that for you. You need to create those equations. So all I've done is I've gone and followed the instructions in my previous video. I've solved system of equations. I've gone two equations in this situation. Rather than having x comma y, I've got a comma c. Hit enter and out came my scaffold that I filled in. And lo and behold, obviously it's going to give you both answers, but we would only be interested in that c equals 127. Okie dokie. Next one. The perimeter of a rectangle is 48 centimeters. Right, now perimeter and rectangle. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always like to draw a diagram first. So the perimeter is the distance all the way around the edge. If the length of the rectangle is three times the width, right, so if the length, so let's call that W, and we now know that that is L, all right? So we know that the length and the width are, okay, yep, okay, cool. Determine its dimensions. Now, when it says determine the dimensions, it wants to know the length and the width. Let's come up with our two simultaneous equations. Now, I don't know about you, but this is actually a lot, lot easier to do without simultaneous equations. Now, anyway, just leave it at that. So we know that the width plus the length plus the width plus the length is equal to 48. And you're gonna say, but how? Well, a length plus a length and a width plus a width is gonna give me my perimeter. Now we can rewrite that as 2w plus 2l equals 48. That's one of them. But it's also told me that the, the length is equal to three times the width. Now in this situation, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna substitute, all right? I'm not gonna eliminate because it's much, much easier here to substitute because I know that l can be replaced with 3w. So I've got 2w, plus 2L is 48, let's substitute that L, so 2W plus two lots in brackets of 3W, now remember, because there's more than one letter, put them in brackets, is equal to 48, so 2W plus 6W is equal to 48, and that's 8W is 48, divide both sides by eight, gives me eight, 16, uh, six. Couldn't do that in my head then, six eights are 48. So we're finished, yes, no, because we've got to find the dimensions, we've got to find both in this situation. So if we know the width is six, we know that L is equal to three times W, so that's three times six, which is 18. Now I don't know about you, but I would just like to check that that's true. So here is my finished one. So I've got 18, 18, six and six, let's just check those all add up to give me 48. 18 and 80 give me 36, plus 12 is 48. Congratulations, ka-ching. Check on the CAS. Once again, I could put these into my CAS to make sure that I had solved them correctly. And yes, as we see here, the length uh, was 18 and the width was six. Last example, Mark buys three roses and two gardenias. Guess what letters we're going to use for this example? Mm -hmm. R and G, congratulations, R and G. So Mark buys three roses and two gardenias for $15.50. Woohoo! Uh, Peter buys five roses and three gardenias for $24.50. How much did each type of flower cost? Congratulations. Right now, well, let's see. Can I, am I going to do this for substitution? Nap, because I don't have R equals or G equals. So let's look at this as an elimination question. Are the R's the same? Nope. Are the G's the same? No. Okay, chill. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna make them the same. And I'm gonna multiply the top one by three and the bottom one by two. Why? Because I'm gonna make the G's the same and I prefer to multiply both three and two than three and five. Okay, top equation multiplied by three gives me nine R plus six G is equal to, right, 15.5 times three gives me $46.50. 
bottom one becomes 10R plus 6G is equal to 2450. I can do this in my head, I know, but I'm just going to do this now. 49. Which ones are the same? The 6Gs. There's plus and plus. We're going to be plus. Take them away. So we're going to take them away. Right. 9 minus 10 is minus rows is equal to, and then we're going to do 46.5 minus 49 gives me minus 2.5. Or in this situation, $2.50. Now, because there's a minus and a minus on both sides, they cancel out to give me the cost of a rose is $2.50. How do we find out the cost of a gardenia? We substitute it back in. That's right. So we've got three roses plus two gardenias is 15.50. So we now know that three times 2.5 plus 2G equals 15.50. All I've done is substituted in. I said, well, I know a rose is 2.5, put it in. So that's going to be 7.5 plus 2G is 15.50. Take away $7.50 from both sides. Gives me, I'm going to argue I should be able to do this in my head, but I don't want to make a mistake. Gives me eight. And so we now know the gardenia is four dollars. Now, obviously, because it wants to know the type or the cost, you would therefore say a rose equals two dollars fifty, and a gardenia is equal to oh, you can't do a dollar sign now, four dollars. Kerching. Now, obviously, we can check this one on the CAS. Yes. Um, there we go. And so what do we notice? The rose was $2.50 and the gardenia was 4 Now, as I say, these are challenging and they are meant to get you to think. And the more you do them, the better and better you'll get. But um, I think I'm pretty much done for this video. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye-bye. Stay safe.